Our first topic this evening is a discussion on the digester upgrade at the sewer plant in conjunction with, in conjunction with the accessory building. And uh, Art Patron and Rick Keneally are here tonight from the sewer department to uh, kind of lead this conversation and answer any questions that the board has. Correct. So I'll introduce Rick Neely. He is our uh, chief plant operator from the Camden Group, and uh, he's here. Uh, he's in a short time with us. Has looked at uh, the digesters, uh, but we'll, we'll sort of step back. Uh, digesters have been a uh, problem for many years at that plant. Uh, two years ago, we allocated a very few number of hours for a. Uh, uh, digester guru to come in and just do a quick look at them. Uh, from that, we did a very cursory itemized list of you know what we needed. But again, that was two years ago. There's been no deep dive into anything as far as form and function. Uh, Rick is going to help us out and better understand uh, the state of our digesters, how it impacts the plant, and uh, if we get them running properly, what we could look. We could really look forward to. I just got to say, though, using the term deep dive in the sewer plant, don't. <laughs> right, well, I just, it's, it's a deep dive. Yeah. You, you've been hanging around. You're not mic'd up, by the way, <laughs> Highway <laughs> Superintendent Herbs. <laughs> You're not mic'd up, are you? Oh, no. oh boy. I am not. So, uh, I no. so it's, it's really, uh, you know, Rick's going to lead this, uh, this show and uh, tell us where we're at and these things actually worked and worked properly, what we, what we could look forward to. All right, well, thank you guys for allowing me to come here and speak. But um, just briefly to kind of give you my history to show that I do have some kind of value to this conversation, mm -hmm. that uh, I worked uh, for the city of Rome, a 12 MGD plant, for 34 years, uh, was chief operator for eight years, and we had uh, many, it was almost like a, larger sized Webster, um, a lot of the same um, equipment, operations, processes. So I felt very comfortable when I got here seeing what they had. Um, and I do want to say very impressed with the staff that is there. Um, the limited staff does an unbelievable job with what they have. Um, but as I looked over the plant, I did see some issues that I think really need addressing for uh, several reasons. Safety, one of the biggest ones. But also there's a lot of... Um, economic value to upgrading these digesters. Um, we are, I mean, just some brief ones, and I'll get into it briefly, and then if there's questions, is um, we're paying for natural gas to um, heat the boilers there when we have biogas potentially to use. Um, but they're not functioning. They're not mixing. They're not heating. Um, we just had a leak in the outside of the um, water seal and uh, had some sludge come out. Not a lot, but your gas is coming out there. You have pressure relief valves on the covers that are not safe to walk on. Um, you can't check them. And if your pressure relief goes, it's a very important aspect to your digester. You know, you could lose a cover if your, you know, your pressure gets too much and your relief valve isn't working. No, what do you mean lose a cover? This sinks in? Oh no, it'll it'll go. There'll be the UFO sightings. Um, other things is, when your digesters work properly, it's breaking down the carbon factor and in there, and that goes into methane gas. And when they're not working properly, you're not getting that release. And that means there's more water in your sludge. Um, that means you're paying for more hauling costs. And that's a big ticket item for this plant is the cost to haul sludge and solids. So you will reduce solids, um, hauling weight, so there's a lot of factors, but what we found in Rome, and so I did a big, um, I was just uh, a big digester upgrade and solids handling upgrade, and um, I'm not sure where I was going with that. Solids gas, the carbon? Um, just, um, no, I did forget. Too many things going on in my head. Anyways, um, I do think there's, um, oh, also it will open up possible revenue stream, because right now they're not taking any outside waste which is a nice revenue stream, tipping fees for the, um, the plant. And in that aspect, you have infrastructure upgrades that need to happen in, di in wastewater plants, as you guys all know. You voted on them. Um, they're going on now. And when you can find a project and improve your infrastructure, but also have cost savings um, and 
revenue stream to help pay for these projects, it's a win-win situation. And we know these uh, plants were built in the 70s and 80s, and a lot of the equipment's reaching its useful life. And it's better to be proactive than reactive. It's much more cheaper to do it that way. Plus, when you have opportunities to save money and create um, excess revenue, um, it makes it very attractive. We did replace those covers 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. around there, and, and, and it just wasn't, it wasn't a good project. It wasn't done with a... The person that was contracted to do it was kind of here and there, more there than here. Yeah, I think you might, you want to go with fixed covers instead of those floating covers. You have so many issues with floating covers, is put them on there, fix them. Um, metal? Yeah, metal. Then you can walk on there, you check all your gas uh, appurtenances on Because those are fiberglass, as I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and not to interrupt, but they're breaking down, they're decaying uh, to such a point, they shoot up a they are our sludge feed, feed pump, so we had to replace that in conjunction with that, which was not planned. Um, it ruined it. And we put a grinder in front of it with a rock catcher, so we would save our pump. I don't think fiberglass was ever a good idea to begin yeah. with. It was it, Fiberglass were replacing the, the metal ones that existed, yeah. and the ones that looked were aluminum or fiberglass, and aluminum were much more expensive, but in the long run, that's probably where we should have gone, but we didn't. So and they're filled with gravel. Rick, and I know we've, we've talked a little bit about this, is that um, there are some New York State laws coming down the pike at the beginning of 21 or 22 that is going to affect uh, either industrial users or uh, food waste. Organic waste, yes. Organic waste. Um, I, I could be wrong. I think some of this, Joe uh, Herbst, our highway superintendent, has been introduced to in the last couple months because of they wanted to test uh, the food waste by putting it in our uh, mulch, our leaves, and see if they could turn it over and turn it into uh, yeah, into fertilizer that Scotts would buy, and it might be a big income producer, revenue producer for uh, for the town. Um, so that's when I first got introduced to these law changes, which I don't quite understand, but it's it's going to have an effect. And you had said, Rick, that a, a, a sewer plant like Webster's, if properly configured, um, could take advantage of that business opportunity or revenue potential. Well, you, there, there has to be a middleman to actually create that waste and put it into something that's pumpable, you know, because, um, and there's contaminants in the food waste, you'll have plastic forks and stuff like that, and you don't want those in your digester. So it's almost another recycling stream that someone I'm sure we'll get on board with and create. Um, there's a pilot project in uh, in my area, the Niagara River Cell Waste Authority put in a, a project where they're taking food waste and putting it in there and creating something because there's the United County plant right near there. Um, but they're talking about anything more than one ton produced in a week has to be brought to anaerobic digestion or compost facility. Um, within a 40, 50, 60 mile radius, I forgot the exact number. Yeah. Um, and there's another energy source or creating uh, biogas which could be converted to electricity, pipeline quality gas, fuel vehicles. I mean, those are all things that are out there that are going on. Um, and then that makes it even more economic. I guess I didn't pick up that there's an aspect to that turning revenue that is a, a, another part of, you'd have to build on site that we haven't got in our numbers of phase one or phase two, and I didn't pick that up. But Do you have any cost estimates? So, and, and I'll go back to, we have very, very rough cost estimates. Again, this was something that was talked about almost two years ago now. There's been no deep dive into this. Um, Rick is just getting his feet wet as to different options and what the plant can, can actually do and what we can get out of it. So, I... You know, we, we call it an upgrade. I'd rather say repair and upgrade because this stuff doesn't work now. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the cost could range from four million to, to ten. I mean, depending on the scope of it, it's not cheap. The what I'm gathering from this is kind of like a thirty thousand foot view. Absolutely. Um, to really get in the weeds, because there's a lot of things here that, and and I'm no expert. But 
I, um, I kind of see some, maybe there's some things different we can do. Utilize current brick and mortar instead of adding more, you know, use what you have, retrofit stuff that tanks are already in the ground and you don't have to build a new one because that's really, really where your costs go up. Okay, so your proposal when you're talking about this is not just to do the covers, but to build a new digest, digest again. <clears throat> Rep well, yeah, repair. 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 You're not, We're not building a new digester where I'm starting to interrupt, but sorry. there's the mixing, there's no mixers that work. There's safety valves that don't operate. The flare is inoperable. Uh, there's a whole list of so it's more than just the covers. Absolutely, yes. Yes. it is. Total rehab of the digest. Yeah. Total rehab. Okay, so that's that's much different than what happened 13 years ago. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And I don't know. I can't speak for back then. If boilers were working then, mixers were working, but none of that is working now. Yes, they were working then. Okay, so so maybe that was all that needed to be done then, but mm -hmm. right, right now years of long the time. other stuff is really. And I don't know if you guys have any handouts or anything for us to follow along, but I, I know that since Patty and I have been in on these meetings, and especially th this is, what you're talking about is phase two of the sewer project. Um, phase one is $12 million. I, I, know, I know, Art. I mean, we, I'm, I'm getting to the punchline, okay? Okay. I'm getting to the punchline. All right. The engineers did give us some columns, if you want to call it, of a certain analysis where they said, okay, here are three ways you could do the digesters where the bare minimum way was like, I want to say a million three. Can I jump in? Please do. So, and this this is why I, I intentionally bounced around, because I don't want anyone to be tied to a number. Because, again, that was two years ago. That was off of six hours of work by a digester guru. We haven't really, we haven't commissioned an engineering firm to go in there and look at it and look at it with Rick and say, okay, what do we totally need to do? Rick had talked about reusing some of the things we have. Uh, we haven't really tied in um, the ability to get grants. Uh, so I think where you're heading with a million two, I think that's from conversations in the last day or two is gone. We're conversations that you've had that that we've I had in the last day or two exactly. That, okay. Yeah. So I didn't mean to interrupt. So I, 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 I don't want to get hung up on that number. I mean, we can throw out a number, but again, it's still at thirty thousand feet. Yeah. So what do we need to do to repair them to make them functional? And oh, by the way, within that same conversation what can we do to generate revenue out of them? I think, well, it's, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I mean, this has to be done. I mean, you, you have non-functioning part of our, our plant that, that's, you, we have a part of our plant that's just I, not function, it's not working. I think they're limping through right now. And, and it's going to get worse. Yeah, and that's um, when it gets more expensive, when you're not, you haven't planned, and all of a sudden now you're doing piecework when things happen. Can I just, I just want to elaborate a little more on the Rome project, and because it's similar in aspect to what could be done here, we were lucky enough to, I, I got a relationship with Chobani, and we got locked in with their acid way, which is very high strength, which creates a lot of biogas. So the, the deal was they were bringing six, going to bring in six loads a day. But we uh, put in micro turbines, well, it's in the process still, to create energy and electricity. And through us just upgrading our digesters, we had one big digester and a secondary, which Webster has two smaller digesters and a secondary. So an option could be to change that secondary and primary to give you more treatment capacity without building a whole other tank. Um, so that's what we were doing there. And with that high strength waste, and with our normal stuff coming in and feeding this digester, fats oil and greases from your pumping oil around your, your restaurants and all that stuff is great for digesters, is that project will be cash flow positive year one. Uh, $12 million project, we will be able to pay that, that lease payment and the bond and still have surplus revenue to go into the general fund, or into the sewer fund because we had the high strength waste. So I think while we're looking at this and as it continues forward to maybe start maybe looking and then you throw these other pieces in there that you create energy sell back dump it we take we're taking Rome off the grid so we're going to create enough energy to feed our plant and the excess would be dumped back at wholesale rate 
So all these factors come in and you're utilizing your own biogas for heating and stuff. So these are things maybe to also maybe on the back burner look at while we're doing this or you guys are doing this to say, hey, maybe there's some other options that isn't just this one. You know, as we're talking about that, okay, is there a opportunity to partner with with Ledestri or with Mott's or someone like yeah, that? All that type of food you waste know, is great it, for a digester. And you know, and I keep thinking about it, this isn't just within the vacuum of our plan on Phillips Road. It's a, you know, I've said it to Rick and probably tired of it. It's a bit of a sales and marketing, getting out there, partnering with some industries, and how is this going to benefit? One thing I've learned, I guess, in the last few months about sewer plants is that other than sex, that, yeah, that they don't all have digesters, right? And that digesters are somewhat part and parcel foundational to some of the things you're talking about with revenue production, mats, all that. Is it, am I reading that correctly? Mm -hmm. So we had the digesters, so that's that's good. Be nice if they worked, um, but. Uh, and, and we've talked about, I mean, obviously, uh, <laughs> Webster in the sewer world is going to have a lot of things happen in the next uh, 35, 40 days. Um, I think it's been well discussed that uh, Patty, his deputy supervisor, and myself have been working with the village mayor and the village uh, deputy mayor. As they dovetail at the village to voting at the end of August, uh, whether they want to pursue a regional plant with the town or whether they want to invest uh, money into their current sewer plant. Um, if they go regional, I think it will uh, open the doors to f funding and grants that we cannot get as a standalone town plan. <coughs> we did not say that that's what we... That's correct. You know, um, and I think it might also have a, a direct effect on the timing of all this. Um, so, so are, are you suggesting that we should wait for those 35 days to find out what they're going to do, or should we at this point give these two a direction as to what we're going to do? I mean, we're going to do this one way or the other. It, you know, we don't have a choice. Barry, and it's funny because, you know, there, there's two ways to skin a cat. You could do this uh, on the, uh, because you're excited about the cost cutting and the revenue potential. If that's your motivator to do it, great. If your motivator is, is the thing is not working now and there is potential problems of leaking gases and that who knows what that uh, holds for us with whatever agency that is, I don't know if that's, I, I don't know what agency, it could be several. Um, that's your motivator, fine. Um, either way. That would be my motivator. We got, we got a plant that's not functioning as it should be and is only going to get worse and it's not going to get we're not going to achieve the the, the, the goal overnight um, to give these guys the go-ahead to start getting into the meat of this and figure out exactly what it is we're going to need what what their recommendation specifically is and get it ready to find out how much it's going to cost to go because we're going to have to pay for it and in the meantime hopefully uh, we'll get a decision with the other which will clarify the whole situation even more so, but uh, yeah. so, we got things that aren't working and they're, they're only going to get worse. So, so let me jump in. So 35 days, right? that's a milestone. Within 35 days, again, we're at 30,000 feet. Rick and I can continue, you know, brainstorming, looking at other things and, uh, and continue down the path without tying in uh, an engineering contract or anything mm -hmm. like that. I don't think there's anything. It, it's, it's a no-cost endeavor. That's my suggestion. It, absolutely, and, and we're going to keep doing that. There's something to keep, it. something to keep in mind is in May 2019, we signed a two-year contract with Casella with a one-year uh, additional one year. So that's $125 a ton. That's a half a million dollars a year. We don't know what's going to happen when that contract is up. I can only imagine it's going to go up even higher. And I think Pete was saying today, well, we take our waste to Ontario County. As of 2028, they will no longer take the waste. So 
I mean, literally within the last hour, you had re reached out to one of our vendors. And so there's some options there that I don't think we, we need to, we need to repair and upgrade this stuff. I don't think it's anything we want to rush into without looking at it again, holistically, right. where does it tie in? What are our options? Uh, but we can't drag our feet forever. I would think that if you, if you continue to investigate on your end, you will be better positioned to know where we need to go once that decision is made in 35 or whatever days it is. Right. Um, and we'll already be that much farther down the road. We certainly don't want to do an emergency repair on these things only to find out that another decision was made and maybe we should have gone a different direction with it. Would that be appropriate? I, I, I can't agree more. Uh, we need to look at it holistically. You know, along with that, uh, we talk about revenue and, and things that have failed. It's uh, we we are missing two hundred thousand dollars of septage in leachate revenue uh, because of two things. Correct me if I'm wrong. Our septage receiving station is not a receiving station, and aeration. So, so, and th those are another two items we can look at and hopefully come back and say, okay, we can prove an ROI on those. You know, if we do repair X, we're going to get this much back. So I, I agree. I don't want to jump into an engineering contract. I don't think there's a need to at this point. No, I, I, that I would, think we that can do enough suggestions. Okay, but we're going to keep moving forward. I think forward. we can do right. some groundwork here. Yeah, absolutely, we can. some things up a little bit. All the groundwork necessary up to mm -hmm. yeah. to that, that point. That point, yeah. yeah. So we're going to continue with that then. Perfect. So your di the digestions are not operational right now? They're operational, just not to the capacity or to the performance they should be. Um, and uh, that's why you're getting odors on the, the bio solids that are going out, because um, it's not breaking down the solids. Oh. And heating and mixing. So. And we don't have that? No. We don't have heating and mixing. And they're in simplest terms, holding tanks? Yeah, you're just pushing solids through, you're not really reducing them. And that's what the purpose of digester is, is a reduction in solids, so that's less that you have to put through your essential energy. You used to process. use the gas that is made by this, that's a curbent to heat the boiler. We're to heat them. You, you're absolutely right. That's but what used to happen, that's what was used. We didn't buy gas, we used the gas that was being developed right. by this, the, off, the offspring of this. So when I are paying for natural gas. And now I'm paying for natural gas. When I started, we looked, I got the boiler guru in, he looked at it, but the gas column just fluctuated so much, it couldn't hold. Uh, the mixers won't drive. It's so we're on natural gas. That's how we. That's how we heat that building. That's how we. But usually the makeup is like 65 percent methane, 35 percent, 30 percent carbon dioxide. And if you don't have a well mixed digester and a well operating, you're not going to get that mixture either to even keep a boiler running. It'll you know it'll choke itself out. So you need to have that mixture also. And if it's not operating correctly, you're not going to get that. Right. So there's so I, one more missed opportunity with. The conditions we've got now. And all these little things add up. Right. It is. I, I found said en enough of the oh. boiler. So we're not going to keep throwing money at it. Yeah. So. Let them fly. Noodle. Mm -hmm. Figure out the numbers and in parallel as we move forward uh, in the next 35 days, uh, um, Art, we'll see if we get you guys mm -hmm. back at a workshop to present what you've come up with or whatever. I mean, good idea. Yeah, I, you know, it's just a good conversation to have, and, you know, having Rick here, he can obviously, he's more eloquent than I. And, and Agreed. Uh, I mean, yes. I'm better looking, but anyways. Um, so, so really, the, the question that Tom had started out with, you know, accessory building, digesters, this or that, I think we've gone past that, quite honestly, looking at the amount of repair and work that these digesters need, I don't think it makes a difference, but this was my conversation in question to Tom uh, maybe a week ago. So we've got the, we've got the accessory building budgeted. 25% of that is going to come from a grant. At that point, I sort of, I mean, we've already signed 
to move forward, but I've held it. I've held that, I've held that agreement. Um, at that point, you know, I wanted to have the conversation, do we just take those funds from the accessory building and put them in the digester, but we've already blown past what that money can do, and we would miss out on 25% grant for the accessory building. Uh, I have absolutely no problem holding it another 35 days to see what happens. And just for some clarification, we did look with we and the state about doing some digester work on yes. the current grant. They said no dice. That, that's absolutely correct. We looked no. at that a while back. Uh, did they give the reasoning for that? It wasn't included in the uh, yeah, in the original in the original documents. Mm -hmm. It said digester upgrade, but it didn't. Uh, so you can't reapply with it in there. No. Your no new grant. So, but we, we could have, apply for a new grant, right? And to apply for a new grant, mm -hmm. it would have to be really pretty much the whole project, yeah. sort of like we did with this. It'd have to be shovel ready, it'd have to be a big enough project to make it go. Uh, well, and it very well could be, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. I think, given the energy savings and the energy um, productivity, perhaps it might be eligible for some additional grants. You know, and, and there's another thought because I did go down the path even with this a simple simple boiler of getting two thousand dollar rebate. You know, is there something in our G and E that may be willing to kick in? There'd be a lot of things to explore in that. Exactly. Okay. All right. Go at it. And we'll keep in contact and we'll figure out when you wanna come back and Yeah, and, and I I'm gonna wait until the end of August to yeah. release that building. Okay. Barnlow Judas, I just think it'd be prudent. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I don't know if it'll change anything, but what's another 35 days at this point? Okay. All right. So. Thank you very much, Sean. Go get him. Thank you. Is that that you have Thank something you, to say? Thank you. I'm going to hang out for. All right. Would you like minutes. to? I'm going to get on the road. Yeah. Thank you. Is this on the digester upgrade? Uh, Matt, I, I, there is no, is there a microphone there? Is Mr. Chatfield going to say something about grants? say that this there is a dovetail for this work with both land use and economic development talking about bringing in waste flows and the waste flows that can come in and support upgrades to the plant there's a land use component to that is if you were to attract economic development and investment to support those upgrades via you know in, enhanced BOD loads from from new development where would we put that, and do we have enough land that's zoned appropriately for that? So there's 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 um, some part and parcel things that will connect and dovetail with that discussion. It won't drive the discussion, but it may help support uh, the financial model that you're putting in place. You may be able to determine we need X number of gallons per year, gallons per day. How do we do that? What size facility would need to be constructed, and then where could that be, and by whom? And then, then you start marketing this potential. You start marketing suitors to come in and, and make that investment in the community. So, I'd be happy to. Well, you're absolutely right. And be involved in a t ancillary conversation, not with the actual nuts and bolts of the plant itself. But well, and, and that's that's exactly it. I mean, that's how we came to the um, clarifier project was looking at loading, looking at BODs, and again, just at a very cursory level. Uh, that's what sort of drives the size of uh, digestion and so forth. Uh, and, and that would be great. I mean, if that's just another piece of the pie, that'd be fantastic. And that's where Rick is really uh, sharp with that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, he had to leave. He's heading on a vacation actually right now. Uh, so that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Matt.